Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Podcasting and streaming around the globe from sea to shining sea. Right. It's the In Wheel Time car talk <laughs> show just ahead. Alex Dysick, Consumer Reports, best cars of the year. The top 10, anyway. We may go deeper, don't know. Later, spring break driving. Jeff has a feature on that. It's all just ahead on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. All we always, always, yeah, babe, always babe. need, Jeff Zekin. Chief Engineer David Ainsley is probably in bed. I'm Don Armstrong. I'm still in bed, too. I'm just uh, appearing as myself. You so. said sea to shining sea, so take your Dramamine, people. We're going for a ride. <laughs> we are <laughs> going to go for a ride. Oh, Lord. Well, uh, how was your week? We tried some new lighting in here this morning. I have to tell you that. <laughs> How'd that work out for you, Morris? Well, I... I Almost blinded me, uh, but my retinas. Were you were blinded recovered. by the light? <laughs> yes, uh, my, these new glasses don't aren't transition, like so it glasses. was just like in your face. It was. I like them. Thank you. Makes so, you look twenty uh, we, years older. It, we it was a failure, and we'll be back next week with more lighting uh, technology one hundred and one. In the meantime, and in between time, joining us now, Alex and Isaac. Alex, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. We were talking off the air just before we came on, and. Uh, he was on our show about a year or so ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we discovered uh, with that conversation that after his appearance on this fine, fine car talk show, that he became a superstar and was getting calls from girls all <laughs> over the United States, two, three, four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it became a little overwhelming. Uh, I'm sure it did. <laughs> so, Alex, Consumer Reports... Uh, has this little thing that they do, and it's a pretty big deal, actually. It's the top mm. 10 picks for the best car of the year. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so before we get to that, give us a little background. You guys have been doing this for a long, long time. Yeah. And what? It, how do you drill down the cars that compete mm -hmm. for the best of the best for the year? Um, right. Do, do you put them on the track? Do you look at them, love them, mm -hmm. hug them? What? Tell me. The, give me. Give <laughs> me all the. That. Give, give me, me all give the me, skinny. Me. All those things, especially the hugging part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, it's it's a lot of work. We test a lot of cars. Uh, you know, over fifty usually each year, uh, depending on what the market's up to. But um, yeah. So really, to be on the list, it, it takes into account everything that we do. So that really starts with the the road test, getting them on the track, getting them on the road. You know, we buy all the cars that we test. So it's it's living with them. It's putting them through more than 50 different subjective objective tests that we do. Um, so that road test score that comes out of that, that's really like the primary thing, right? That, yep. that comes first. So it has to be a well-performing car. Um, on top of that, it's the surveys that we do with our members. So we do reliability surveys and owner satisfaction. So those two things are factored in as well. Um, so, you know, reliability, people reporting um, what kind of problems they're having and, you know, depending, it might be an engine problem. It could be a smaller problem, like a squeak and a rattle type thing. So these things are kind of weighed appropriately and, and factored in as well. And how many people do you talk yep. to? Uh, over 300,000. Um, and oh. it, it changes depending on the year. Yeah. Um, so quite a few. Uh, and it changes depending on how popular the model is, too. Right. Sure. Um, of course. For, or Toyota Camrys and Maserati Gracales, for example. Um, yeah, so then also owner satisfaction, right? Basically, would you buy this car again? So that's important. Uh, and then the last thing for being on the list is safety. You know, we're, we're really um, focused on safety. So all of these cars have to have standard forward collision warning and automatic emergency braking, you know, down to their very base trim level. So that's a, a qualification. A lot of them on the list have more than that, but that's the kind of minimum qualification. So all of that kind of comes together. And essentially, that's that's how we come up with uh, the 10 best. And then we sort it by various categories. Are there so, some vehicles that don't make the cut just because they don't meet that criteria? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there could be a car that performs really, really well on the track. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, um, you know, about uh, the Rivian R1T and R1S, right? They perform really well. They're impressive vehicles, uh, but we don't have strong reliability data on them, right? A lot of problems. So that kind of keeps them from being on the list, even though... You know, as a new car, they perform quite well. Yeah. So, and that's something to keep in mind. I mean, as we're going to listen to you go through these top 10, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, there are some that, that make the cut, they don't pass or, or uh, they don't make the cut at all. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So it's it's a holistic approach for sure. Yeah. So um, do you bust them up between cars, SUVs, trucks, or do they all just fall into the same mix? Yeah, no, we try to, um, you know, choose categories based on on what the market's doing and what people are looking for and what they're interested in and what we see on our site and through, you know, talking with consumers and whatnot. Um, so, you know, if you look at the list this year, you'll actually see that there's a lot of electrified vehicles, hybrids, mm-hmm. plug-in hybrids. Yep. There's one EV on the list um, and gas cars, too. So I think that really just speaks to where we're at, right? We have all these options. <laughs> um, so we're trying to tell people what what are good within all those options. We know people are kind of on the fence. Do I go hybrid? Do I go EV? That sort of thing. Yeah, sure. Well, where do you want to start? You want to start with number 10? Um, yeah, I mean, they're they're not in any particular order as far as one through 10 but you know i guess the way i've been thinking about it is by powertrain um kind okay, of going yeah. EV, sure. ev plug-in hybrid regular hybrid down to gas car all right well let's do it you you start yeah. we'll, we'll follow your lead and we may uh, shout at you somewhere absolutely in there. yeah yeah definitely so um as far as electric vehicles we have the the tesla model y on the list um we actually had the the tesla model 3 last year um, but now we see that the the Model Y's reliability has increased enough that it kind of bumped the Model 3 off, right? Because they're very similar <laughs> cars, and the Model Y is just kind of a more practical version. You get more cargo space, easier to get in and out of, that type of thing. So uh, reliability increased enough, bumps the Model 3 off, which is also a good car. Um, and I think the really important thing about the, the Model Y is it comes down to the the supercharging network, right? I mean, the the car itself is is great, but having access to that, I mean, it's literally changing in front of our eyes as more automakers well, gain. The the, but, uh, the the Y yeah. is a larger vehicle, and does it does it have the dual motors? Because the uh, the other one, heck, you can get dual or single motors. Yeah, so the one we tested is a dual motor, um, all wheel drive, long range. Um, the one that we tested yeah so usually with electric vehicles and and most vehicles when all-wheel drive is an option that's tends to be the one we test right um so yeah so we tested the all-wheel drive model y uh so we'll see i'm excited to see what happens with the electric vehicle category going forward you know because well you're of that age group we're not (laughs) fair enough i mean (laughs) (laughs) yeah i don't know my world right now is is evs uh you know changing our testing a little bit to account for what's different with electric and plug-in hybrids and such um so that, that's my wheelhouse at the moment but yeah i mean as as other you know for example the ford mach e the mustang mach e is also a good electric car but once it gains access to the the supercharger network which again is kind of happening now um maybe this list looks a little different for evs next year but um yeah so that's that's plug-in hybrids uh or excuse me electric vehicles moving on to plug-in hybrids um we have a, a couple on here the first one is the rav4 prime toyota it's been on the list before. Um, I mean, I don't know if you've all had the opportunity to drive one, but a pretty pretty impressive vehicle. And as far as plug-in hybrids go, uh, it has some of the most range, right? The electric range is over 40 miles, which we kind of see is the average that people do in a day, right? Commuting or maybe doing some errands, going to work, whatnot. So, let, so let, let's stop there for a second. Now, this yeah. is a plug-in hybrid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe we should talk about what, what those are and, and why. Well, there's that. <laughs> and, and I guess my my bailiwick here in, in judging these sort of things when it comes to Toyota uh, is the uh, success that the Prius has had for, yeah. what, 20, 30 years now. Yeah, yeah, the Prius, I mean, it really kind of laid the the groundwork for this type of thing. And um, yeah, so so plug-in hybrids are really interesting because over the last year, um, we really dove in pretty deep and started testing them heavily. Uh, we kind of would sample them and not really include them in the regular test program, but we actually just bought like 12 or so plug-in hybrids over the last year and kind of put them through the test program and yeah. um, looked at them a little differently and you know, these cars are something where you can get that electric uh, range, the 40-ish miles, depending on the car, um, that smooth, quiet acceleration, whatnot. And then you don't have to worry about the public charging because once that, that range is up, you just – it turns back into a regular hybrid for all intents and purposes. Right. And but, you know, my, my 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 bailiwick with that is the fact that you, to get the whole 40 miles – yeah, generally speaking, on the mm-hmm. electric charge, I mean that's a lot of money to pay for the pain it is to have to plug it in. If I'm going to do that, I just as soon have a hybrid. Yeah, no, it's a great point, and that's <clears throat> I'm I'm right there with you. I 
when I talk to people about these, I try to tell them in the terms of, of what is the convenience or inconvenience to me for choosing one of these things, right? With a hybrid, like you mentioned, a regular hybrid, that is, um, I don't have to do anything differently. I just fill it with gas and I just drive it and I have to get fuel coming, right? right? The plug-in, yeah, you, you're you kind of adding that little extra lifestyle change where you got to plug it in really as much as you can to get that extra. And uh, you're paying uh, for that. You're Not only paying the electricity, but you're also paying the upcharge on the yeah. vehicle that's able to right. do that. And, you know, if if you live in a, a community and your main driving is, you know, to church, to the gas station, to take the kids to softball practice, I get that. Right. But, you know, there's a price to pay for that. Yeah, there is. Some of them do qualify for some tax credits. Um, so you have to check that out and you can actually see that on our site. We list out which ones which ones qualify. So you right. can get a little bit of a break there, but yeah. it's not the full 7,500 that an EV can get. But right. um, yeah, so we actually do have this this pretty neat and it's free on our site, this calculator that shows you it doesn't account the that upfront purchase price, but a per mile basis. You can type in your electricity rates and your gas rates and how many miles you drive. And it'll kind of show you gas, hybrid, plug-in hybrid EV. Well, that's which cool. One, yeah, which yeah, one? that would be a big deal. And that, that's a free. That's free on the website. Yeah, it's free if you go into the EV hybrid area on our site on the car side, and then find the buying guide. It'll show you. Um, you can go in there and play with it. Uh, it's actually pretty neat. We just launched that. Um, you know, and and with plug-in hybrids, quickly, the other thing that I get a lot with talking with people who own them is beyond the cost factor, which is definitely a thing. There's this less tangible, harder to quantify, like feel good factor of not going to the gas station as often. There's almost this point of pride of like, oh, I went 600 miles on electricity and only went to the gas station once or something to that effect. Right. It's it's this like, you know, pride in not going to the gas station as often as. Absolutely. Uh, I had a Toyota, uh, let's see, a Toyota Cross last week. The darn thing got 40 miles to the gallon. I'm yeah. in on that. Yeah, the hybrid version. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, just just rounding out the list quickly with the the hybrid or the plug-in hybrid. So that RAV4 Prime, um, the Toyota Prius Prime is also there. And then kind of this uh, aspirational, no-cost object type of vehicle. We have the BMW X5 plug-in hybrid on the list, hmm. which is a pretty interesting car. Yeah. Um, it's tiny. It does What's that? It's a tiny car. It's small. The X5? <laughs> no, it's not. It's a medium size. The X5. What am I thinking is, of? Uh, I don't know what you're thinking. There's a, there's a small SUV. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the X5 um, also gets you, you know, over 40 miles of electric range. Um, but the cool thing about it, a lot of these plug-in hybrids, you know, once the electric mileage is up, you have, you know, a turbo four-cylinder or just a regular naturally aspirated four-cylinder CVT situation um, that is, you know, serviceable it's okay the x5 once that electric range is up you actually have bmw's straight turbo six engine you know oh wow yeah as, as the backup you know powertrain darn kind of nice. <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> it's funny it's uh my incentive to charge that one is actually less because my backup engine again is that sweet yeah exactly we'll just turn off the hybrid part <laughs> yeah, of it exactly. even though you paid right. an extra 20 grand for it I know. turn it's that good. off yeah you yeah. got it yeah it it's interesting because the the plug-in hybrid aspect of that the X5 is already a nice, well driving, comfortable vehicle, exactly. and it kind of just takes it to that extra level. Yep. But but yeah, so moving on to hybrids, which I think are are the really interesting ones because again, you don't have to do anything differently, and the price premium is a lot less. Um, the regular Toyota Prius is on our list, um, but I think the the Toyota Camry hybrid is an interesting one because it's a full size sedan or close to it, right? Um, that gets over fifty miles per gallon. Love and that. Wow. Yeah. You think that you have to go with the Prius to get that, right? Which, you know, the new Prius arguably looks a lot cooler and, and nicer than the previous ones. But yes. it's, right. you know, it's kind of got this like perception about it. Um, whereas the Camry is just a functional, you know, regular kind of looking sedan, but you can get over 50 miles per gallon. You can add all wheel drive if you want. Um, so I think that's a, a pretty sweet option. And it comes in, you know, under $30,000 is the starting price. And we're in a, an age of, the average vehicle transaction price is around $48,000. So, you know, you don't have to spend a ton of money to get that type of efficiency. Right. Yeah. Which is pretty sweet. Yeah, very. Um, Maverick hybrid on the list. Surprise. Uh, yeah, been on the list before. Um, Reliability is high enough. I mean, this is an example of a vehicle that kind of, you know, we to our conversation earlier about getting onto the list, you know, it performs well. It's incredibly practical. 
uh, especially compared to pickup trucks. You know, if you don't need that extra towing capacity and off-road capability, being on that car frame, it drives well. It's pretty civilized compared to a full-size pickup truck in a lot of ways. And you can get it in the garage. Yeah, you can get it in the garage, exactly. <laughs> I know when I bring home a full-size truck for testing, it it sits outside. It doesn't fit in my garage. Right. Um, yeah, and then 37 miles per gallon combined is what we got out of it. So not bad Pretty impressive and the reliability is 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 good enough to make it on the list so I, um yeah pretty pretty sweet little pickup truck alex you, you keep saying that the vehicles that make the list does the yeah. criteria of your testing change from year to year or do you have like a block of criteria that you move from year to year for these vehicles or does it change yeah um it's it it the answer is both honestly uh we have to stay consistent right with all our testing i mean i get this question a lot um you know, because if we were to test a car, for example, that, you know, 20 years ago uh, today, it would probably not a, a car that tested well 20 years ago would not test all that well today. Right. Because compared to the competition. Yes. Technology right? so and everything. Yeah. We have to stay consistent for a reasonable amount of time so that scores are comparable and people can shop and, and know what they're looking at. But then, yeah, we do kind of have to move on um, and capture moving. I'll you tell know, you what, I sure would hate to be in one of your editorial meetings. Yeah. <laughs> update every time <laughs> yeah. nice and complicated huh yeah very complicated uh but yeah so generally the criteria though stays pretty consistent year to year so you um, move with the times yeah yep absolutely yep um yeah and then the the last hybrid on the list um that's a, a really good option is the highlander hybrid the toyota highlander yeah um and it's interesting because you know we know the the three row suv segments pretty uh competitive these days right with like telluride and pathfinder and uh grand highland all these all these vehicles going into the mix well i find uh, it interesting uh among those four three of them are toyota yeah i was thinking the same thing i know yeah you mean as far as the hybrids yeah yeah, um, yeah i mean that that toyota really refining that hybrid system over time it's super reliable i mean it's pretty good when it came out but you know they they kind of take that iterative approach over time and just refine it make it you know even more fuel efficient the transitions when it goes from electric to hybrid mode are just super smooth and it just works right yeah really have to think yeah, too hard about agreed. it um, all right let's move on yeah yeah so uh after the hybrids we have some regular gas cars so there you go let's talk that. let's yeah. talk about us old people <laughs> let's talk about gas <laughs> not interested in any of that electrification stuff i totally get it um so we have three options here all start under the twenty five thousand dollar. Um, oh very good which is or, or close to it anyway, yeah. uh, well under thirty thousand yeah. dollars. That's for sure. And uh, they are the drum roll, please. <laughs> the cross track is the first one, Subaru. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I agree. CD. I agree uh, because I, I'll tell you, uh, Miss, Mr. Mars is going to do a review of one of them, and I, okay. the one I've, I've had a couple of them, and I really do like it a lot. Yeah, rides great, gets good gas mileage, roomy, convenient, nothing surprising out of the interior, but boy, it's solid as a rock. It is a solid vehicle. There's no doubt about it. I mean, yeah, like you said, easy to get in and out of the controls. I mean, they're not the flashiest thing, but they work. Um, and it does. It doesn't look like a dud car anymore. Oh no! No, yeah. no. Actually, the new one does look kind of cool if you look at it from the back. The exactly. Way the fenders kind of come out a little bit, and the yep. tail lights are pinched in a little bit. It actually looks pretty sweet. Yes, I agree. And. Uh, yeah. Also, we got 29 miles per gallon out of it, there which for a non-hybrid and it's traditional all-wheel drive. You know, it has a drive shaft. Mechanical uh, I didn't system. get quite that much. <laughs> no, but Mar Mars has got a lead foot. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. What's next? Well, that I will say that's with our, the base engine. So I would, if you can spring for it, I would go for the the more powerful engine in the cross truck. The the base one's a little underpowered. I, I agree. Yeah. Um, Subaru Forester also on the list. Um, so another Subaru, and you know. Everything that's great about the the Crosstrek, it kind of just is in a little bit larger and boxier of a mm -hmm. package, right? Yep, right. Um, even more practical. Uh, it's actually the 11th year it's been on the list in a row. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. So some vehicles come and go. You know, they've been on the list before, but not consecutively. This one, 11 straight years. So um, pretty solid. And I think, you know, with Subaru, you see their redesigns are really, um, they're they're quite mild, you know, they don't completely throw everything out and, and redo everything. So that kind of helps with their reliability and just, uh, you know, the vehicle progressing over time. Um, and then the last one is the Mazda three, uh, first time it's been on our list. And, hmm. you know, I think again, a car that's been around a little while. So reliability, you know, as the models tend to age, reliability goes up 
and really proves that you don't have to spend a ton to get a, a car that isn't boring. I love the Mazda 3. The only thing I don't like about Mazdas in general is the infotainment system. I think Yeah, it, we're, uh, we're there with you. Oh, um, good. I'm glad somebody yeah, else agrees, yeah. too. And that's coming from Yeah, him. the rotary dial thing is a little you know cumbersome to use, and the way they have it laid out is not the best. So that is a, a con of the car for sure, yeah, but yeah. it drives well. It punches above its weight in terms of like you know interior refinement. They got great engines. Great engines. Uh, the you got all wheel drive if you want, hatchback if you want. Yeah, Agreed, so yeah. pretty pretty nice little car yeah, for sure. Yeah. So there, yeah, so, so there, that's, that's it. The top ten. Well, yeah. uh, it's always fun to go over these and uh, and the reasoning behind them and and y'all's testing. I mean, mm-hmm. everything about it uh, is spot on. And that's what makes it so interesting is to know how they do it. Yeah, true. And the surveys. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, 300,000 people, 300,000 folks that participate in, you know, I think that uh, it's a fair, unweighted kind of thing that you guys do. Uh, hey, go out and buy the car and let us know what you think. It's pretty yeah, easy. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, that yeah. part of it's pretty and, easy. And hopefully Alec had all 300,000 people watching this episode. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that, that are following you. Yeah, following you. Plus the group from last time. So. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Alex, it's great to talk to you, my friend. Thank you so much yeah, for like joining you. us today. Consumer Thanks. Reports, top 10 picks for best car of the year. Alex, let's talk again soon. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Always fun. fun. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. I uh, want to remind everybody that the In Wheel Time Car Talk show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. And a new daily podcast is available from your favorite podcast provider. We also video stream our three-hour weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation. Installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through ProAm.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. Mika Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center, featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Meekum experience, we welcome everyone. Register to bid now at Meekum.com. Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us, just shoot us an email. The address here is info at inwheeltime.com. What did you say, Jeff? No, I was didn't say anything. Uh, Mike was going to push the button. We're not ready for the button pushing yet. There's yeah. no button pushing. I'll take care of the suit. She's outside blocking. Yeah. She's blocking out there because she's going, I want to get in there. That well, the donuts are. It's, it's nice and chilly outside for her, so she's, she's grooving on it. She is grooving on it. Okay. Um, Mr. Jeffrey has a uh, a special 
feature. Uh, <clears throat> the, is it the cruising calendar? No, no, we're doing the spring spring oh, break. I'm sorry. Now this we're... story came to me from my cousin Douglas in Corpus Christi a few weeks ago. He says, "Hey, we're getting ready for spring break. They've got new roads. The onslaught of people going across the bridge, traffic back up, nightmares of all kinds of things like that." So this kind of inspired me. Looking into it, there's there's uh, you got to be careful. You you really do. Yeah, there's a bunch of silly people out there. Yep, you do. So there are. Traffic fatalities in 14 popular spring break destinations from Florida to California discovered that death tolls rise almost 10% during spring break in these destinations. The higher fatality incidents among drivers under 25 years old, and they're from in-state and out-of-state, so be careful. Some of the things that you can prepare for and to watch for is the number one is the weather. If you're going on a road trip, make sure you know the weather ahead of time so that you're not in a snowstorm, a rainstorm, or a hurricane, or anything like that. Be advised of the conditions because you it can impair your driving. Mind your tires. If you have improperly inflated tires or if your tires are bald, you're going to have issues. You're going to have accident for trouble. You're accident for trouble with them accidents. So bald and underinflated tires can lead to accidents, especially, Mike, on wet roads. Mm. Keep your car stocked with emergency essentials. Now, you do this anyways when you go on trips. I mean, you got the cooler, you got your potato chips and your sodas and all that stuff. Pack essentials like a first aid kit, a flashlight, jumper cable, spare tires, and all the necessary tools to do something like that. If you got a fan belt, you got the half inch socket, you got your 10 millimeter, probably lost it, but you can get another one. Gotta have some duct tape. Don't forget the hey, duct and don't tape. forget the cold fried chicken That's and it. the salt. And Rope pepper. and a shovel in case you need that as well. But extra water and snacks is good. Stay hydrated when you're traveling. Prepare for spring break traffic, and this is a big thing for folks. Now, do you know Miami is not necessarily going to celebrate anything for spring break in the Miami area? Yeah, well. Because it's all problems. Yeah. So be prepared for that. They had some ugliness down there in Florida. Yeah, yeah they do. Well, break. in a lot, of, a lot of the coastal towns where it's nice warm weather and nice sandy beaches, mind the road regulations. Follow the speed limits. Wear your seat belts. Obey the traffic laws, people, because you, the life you save might be one of ours or our family members. So aggressive driving behaviors is a no-no. Distracted or tired driving is also an issue. So if you're tired, don't get behind the wheel. Or if you're tipsy or a little inebriated, same thing. Don't do that. Check your car for road trip safety. Inspect it. Brake lights, headlights, turn signals. Uh, does your air conditioner work and you're going to a warm climate? Because you'll be miserable traveling with, you know, three, four people in the car. Or if you're going by yourself, it's just miserable. So remember, safety first. Always be a priority when embarking on a road trip in the fantastic spring break adventures. Hey, uh, today's In Will Time Car Talk Show is sponsored by the group of original Loopy Tortilla restaurants. They are in Houston. Beaumont and College Station, mm-hmm. and Gulf Coast Auto Shield, along with Pro Am Auto Accessories. We will continue here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. I gotta get it going. Hold on. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to load it. Are you? I'm trying to get loaded. Yeah. Well, that that's no change from when you were <laughs> no, in not at all. Sixteen. Okay, I've got the wrong one set up here. So Do you? Just, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we're just going to tap dance and wait till you get done. Please. Okay. Tell me when you're done. And it's going to be another few seconds here. Oh, good Lord. I know. Yeah, well, you know. We need to change it. I guess so. Okay, so we're going to <laughs> push <laughs> this <laughs> button. <laughs> hey, by the way, coming up, we're going to talk to Scott Lingle. I guess that's the way you pronounce his last name. He's the CEO of Adventure Genie. And uh, we're talking about spring break just a second ago. I think that you're going to enjoy uh, what he has to say and all of the that things one, right? that we are going to Pardon me? Talk you away. talking to me? Okay, well, I'm going to do this. So um, yeah. thank you all for joining us. Our show continues right after this. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. 
Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla and College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.